afternoon, everyone. How are you today? Great. Great? <laughs> well, I'm good too. I'm so glad to see you all here for today's JC Talk. I'm Tan Mi Moon, a volunteer here for the JC Talk team. Before we start, would you please either turn off your cell phones or switch them to silent mode? Also, before we further move on to today's talk, I would like to briefly inform you about our JC's current project. The JC has been engaged in a campaign to raise awareness about recycling. Thus, we would like to ask you to consider a reusable mug or other container for your drinks instead of using a disposable paper or a plastic cup. Moreover, please separate your garbage and use the recycling bins at the entrance of the building. Now, shall we move on to today's talk? Today, Amy Badenhorst from the Republic of South Africa is going to give us a talk entitled Building a Bridge to North Korea. She is here to talk about the organization LINK, Liberty in North Korea, and further profess some shocking realities about North Korea as well as North Korean refugees. Are you ready to meet today's speaker? Yes! Yeah. Then, let's please welcome her with a big round of applause. On 17 February 2014, the UN published a report after a year-long investigation of the widespread human rights violations in North Korea. The report says that in North Korea, there is an almost complete denial of the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. Entrenched patterns of discrimination rooted in the state's assigned class system affect every part of life. Discrimination against women is pervasive in all aspects of society. The state has used food as a means of control over the population and deliberately blocked aid for ideological reasons, causing the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people. Hundreds of thousands of political prisoners have died in unspeakable actions in prison camps in the past 50 years. Security forces systematically employ violence and punishments that amount to gross human rights violations in order to create a climate of fear. A North Korean prison camp survivor told of a pregnant woman in a condition of near starvation who gave birth to a baby, a new life born against all odds in a grim camp. A security agent heard the baby's cries and beat the mother as punishment. She begged him to let her keep the baby, but he kept beating her. With shaking hands, the mother was forced to pick up her newborn and put the baby face down in water until the cries stopped and a water bubble formed from the newborn's mouth. The children were starving, dying. They were literally dying under my hand because there was no food.
In China, there are 20,000 to 30,000 North Korean refugees. They are escaping North Korea every day across the heavily guarded Chinese border to mainland China to avoid persecution and starvation. The escapees might face death if returned to their homeland. Most sneak across the Tumen River, which forms roughly a third part of North Korea's border with China. Those who have found escape brokers try to enter the South Korean consulate. However, in recent years, the Chinese government has tightened the security and increased the number of police outside the consulate. According to a source, 60 to 70 percent of the defectors in China are women. 70 to 80 percent are victims of human trafficking. Women are moved from the border to cities further away to work as sex slaves. When caught, Chinese authorities arrest and repatriate these North Korean victims. North Korean authorities keep rape repatriates in labor camp camps or execute Chinese father babies to protect North Korean pure blood and force abortions on pregnant repatriates who are not executed. China refuses to grant refugee status to North Korean defectors and considers them illegal economic migrants. The Chinese authorities arrest and deport hundreds of defectors back into North Korea, sometimes in mass immigration sweeps. Human rights organizations have compiled a list of hundreds of North Korean defectors repatriated by China. For some of them, the fate after repatriation to North Korea is described ranging from torture, detention, or prison camps to execution. Perception is an invisible force, one that lives in our minds. But the effect of our perceptions are anything but invisible, since they determine what we think, say, and how we act. In this way, this invisible force of perception has influenced the course of history. In the 18th century, we believed that Africans were less than human, and we made them slaves and denied their human rights. Our perceptions were wrong. They were based on lies, and innocent people paid the price. In the 20th century, we failed to respond to the plight of millions of people because international politics and the media define North Korea by high politics rather than the North Korean people. Our perception was determined by the political rhetoric of the Cold War and has been that way ever since. North Korea is a regime arming with missiles and weapons of mass destruction. States like these and their terrorist allies constitute an axis of evil arming to threaten the peace of the world. If you live in North Korea, the big news you would have learned today is you have a new first lady. Put it another way, Kim Jong-un is off the market. This perception has allowed the atrocities of the regime to go unnoticed. While we are talking about nuclear weapons and treating the Kim leadership as tabloid news, the North Korean people are starving, isolated, and denied fundamental human rights in a zero-tolerance system enforced by a network of political prison camps, reminiscent of Nazi concentration camps. The regime aims to isolate its people by trying to control all information going into and out of the country, and punishes anyone who attempts to learn about the outside world. This is not history. These are the incredible challenges that the North Korean people face today. But the world has neglected this, instead allowing politics to define North Korea. In order to survive, the North Korean people have created illegal markets to provide themselves and others with food and goods that the government can no longer supply. These markets have undermined the power of the regime and are also serving as hubs for the spread of new information and technologies like DVDs and cell phones, which are modernizing and opening up the North Korean society from below. Together, these people-driven events are spreading new ideas and creating new pressures for change challenging the regime's ability to keep the people isolated. The shift is happening in North Korea. This is what we should
should be talking about. This is what the media should be reporting on, and this is what politicians should be focused on. Why? Because more attention on the nuclear weapons stalemate or the North Korean regime is not going to lead to solutions. Shifting the way the public thinks about North Korea allows for far more progress to be made. The North Korean people can be supported. We can help empower their efforts to push for change and increase their freedom. And their stories can be told wide and far until North Korea is defined by its people. If we, in the outside world, shift our focus from the high politics to the people and come alongside them in their struggle, then liberty in North Korea will not be impossible. It will be inevitable. I joined an organization called Liberty in North Korea. LINK is a non-political, non-governmental organization who rescues North Korean refugees hiding in China and helps them resettle in the free world. LINK rescues refugees through a 3,500 mile modern underground railroad, which is called the Free Passage Model. LINK has provided a way for North Koreans to leave China without cost or condition. LINK has stabilized safe escapes route through China and Southeast Asia and have built relationships with individuals who work in the modern underground railroad who can help LINK move these refugees safely across borders. The free passage model ensures that refugees are treated with dignity and respect throughout the risky journey and allows refugees to begin their new lives in freedom and without debt. The wonderful aspect about LINK is that even after rescuing refugees and bringing them safely into the free world, they provide them with financial and emotional support. After a rescue, refugees go to a safe house where LINK provides them with basic needs like food and clothes and medical care. Refugees have a chance to settle in a safe house and start familiarizing themselves with the world around them. The transition is not easy. It's a lot to take in and they need support. LINK helps them find a job or enroll in a college scholarship. They also help them with translation, learning to speak English, and counseling. LINK focuses on the people and not the politics. North Koreans have emerged as unique agents of change inside and outside their country. The people are breaking away from the regime and are transforming their society from the bottom up. The people have driven the growth of markets across the country and created new ways to connect to the outside world. Since the collapse of the state economy in the 1990s, unofficial markets have not only enabled the North Korean people to make a living, but also provided the people with goods that were outside the government's control, including new technologies like DVDs, USBs, laptops and cell phones. These new ideas provided the people with new perspective and possibilities. The people are not as isolated as they once were, and they are gaining physical and psychological independence from the regime. Tens of thousands of North Koreans have risked their lives to escape to a better life outside, and many of these have emerged as agents of change. Money and by sending money and information back to their home communicate through illicit channels communicating with the people back in North Korea. This helps to accelerate social change, fuel grassroots marketization, and this weakens the regime's control. This is a story about a young woman who is a game changer. 
She is smart, strong, and full of potential. But the environment she was born in kept her down. The system ruling over her micromanages her life, forcing her to live in poverty. And that's only the beginning. The system even attempts to control what she knows and what she thinks. She's isolated from the outside world, and going online is not only illegal, but impossible. And it gets worse. The system was designed to keep her disempowered and to prevent her from fulfilling her human potential, no matter how hard she works. This system is real. It's not only trying to control her, but over 24 million others like her. This is the reality of life for the North Korean people today. But there's good news. The North Korean government underestimated the potential of its people, including hers. Remember, she's smart. She broke away from the regime's control by joining new unofficial markets. These markets not only enabled her to make a living, but provided her with goods that were banned by the government, including new technologies and foreign media. These new ideas provided her with new perspectives and possibilities. For the first time ever, she was able to imagine a life without the system. So she decided to escape it. She knew her only option was to cross into China, but even there she was in danger of being captured and sent back. And like other North Korean women in China, she was also in danger of exploitation through sex trafficking or being sold into a marriage she didn't want. But she was able to avoid capture and exploitation by being given a chance to escape China. Her journey to safety and freedom would not be easy. She had to travel over 3,000 miles across rough terrain and multiple borders. Once she completed this journey, she was free. Taking advantage of her new freedom, she enrolled in classes and educated herself so she could succeed. This is where it gets even better. She never forgot about her family and friends in North Korea. She quickly found a way to reestablish contact with them, and she started sending money back. Lots of it. Her family was smart too, so they invested the money into their own market activities. They bought a bike, giving them quicker access to markets so they could sell more goods. Within a few months, they were able to move closer to the market and expand their business to make a better living. Do you see what's happening here? She's built a bridge to North Korea. And she's not the only one. There are over 10,000 refugees like her sending money and information back to their home communities in North Korea. And it amounts to 10 to $15 million. This bridge is massively significant because it's fueling the grassroots marketization of the country and allowing the people to become stronger and more independent from the regime. It's accelerating irreversible bottom-up changes that are transforming North Korean society today. And it's all being fueled by game changers just like her. There are thousands more North Korean refugees hiding in China, hoping for the chance that she received. This is where you can help. You can provide that chance. By raising the funds to rescue a refugee, you can help more North Koreans fulfill their potential and become agents of change. Help build the bridge to North Korea. Rescue a game changer. Right. Uh, can everybody see me? Because of the dark? Okay, as long as you can see me. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful face. Then let's <laughs> Link is a non-profit organization and they are solely funded through two initiatives. Uh, nomads, and nomads and rescue groups. Nomads are passionate young adults who travel all over North America to high schools, colleges, and universities, building and supporting uh, for, to gain some support for the refugees. Then, number two, rescue teams. Rescue teams are local leaders of the Link movement in hundreds of communities around the world. A number of fundraising events throughout a certain period of time and this year I am proud 
to announce the Guangzhou Link Rescue Team. Uh, we can't change the politics, but we can change the lives of these refugees. And that is why I'm here today, to recruit members for, my Guang, for, the, for the Link Guangzhou Rescue Team. We are planning four fundraisers this year, but we need a team of volunteers to help and donations. It only takes $2,500 to save a refugee. This is a, a summary of the breakdown of funds, which I would like to share with you guys. So if you fu raise funds and you get $2,500, $250 goes towards food and clothing, shoes, toiletries, medicine. $500, only $500 goes towards transportation, <coughs> bringing them from China either to South Korea or to the USA. $100 is for shelter, for the safe house where they get a warm bed and food. $1,350 goes towards uh, the let me see. Cost for fines, especially on the Chinese border where they have the rescue brokers who help them to bring the refugees safely across. And $300 <coughs> is for emergencies, uh, transfer, still transfer fees and other supplies. Right guys, so after this talk, there will be an opportunity for you to sign up if you want to get involved in this group. <coughs> Basically, we're going to just get together and brainstorm ideas for fundraisers. It won't be a lot, it will be maybe once a month. And uh, talk about new ideas, where, how we can raise awareness and raise funds for just one refugee. And we will even have the opportunity to meet that refugee after raising the funds. We also, we already have a fundraising page. This is online. The link is on our Guangzhou Link Rescue Team Facebook page. If you click on it, you can go into and you can automatically donate with if you have a credit card. For cash donations, you can talk to me afterwards. Right. This is our Guangzhou Link Rescue Facebook page. Please join I, just to see what's happening and when we're having a fundraiser then you can support us. My passion for North Korea started after reading this book called Camp 14 by Blaine Harden. It's a biography about Shin Dong-yoon. Shin was the first North Korean defector who successfully escaped the total control zone camp in North Korea and lived to tell about it. He's also believed to be the only person to have been born in a North Korean camp to escape North Korea. Reading his biography changed my life. I learned about North Korea by reading this book. It exposed so much truth at what is happening in North Korea and it triggered this passion inside me to help North Korean refugees. This is Shin's story. I am I was born in Gaetron, North Korea in the country's harshest prison camp, camp number 14. No one is allowed out. I never knew the name of our country's leaders or that life existed outside its walls. It was my home for the first 23 years. Most of my memory at the camp consists of exhausting labor, trying to avoid abuse from guards, torture, and constant inescapable hunger. When a new inmate arrived at my camp and told me about chicken and pork, I wanted to taste meat too. For the first time in my life, I had something to dream about. A simple goal, but it was then I knew I had to escape. My friend Park and I 
decide to escape together while a group of us were collecting firewood. As we approached the above wire, I had no fear of being shot at or electrocuted. I knew I had to get out and nothing else mattered at that moment. I was able to get through the fencing, however my friend Bob was caught in the fence and was electrocuted. Outside the camp for the first time, I saw North Korea, but only for 20 days. The feeling of ecstasy to be out of the camp was beyond description. So many things I had not seen, smelled, or imagined. I ran down a mountain until I found a locked house. I broke in and took some rice that I later sold at the first mining village I found. I used that money to bribe the border guards to lend me through the North Korea border with China. Relief swept over me when I finally reached South Korea. I no longer had to run, no longer had to hide, no longer had to stop. In South Korea, I learned that organizations like Link exist. I was humbled and overwhelmed. The people a world away were working to tell stories like mine to start a movement in behalf of my country. Whenever I hear the word North Korea, anger wells up inside of me toward a government that doesn't respect human life. But rather than stay angry, I decided to help my countrymen find freedom through telling their stories. Working with Link gives me that opportunity. The idea that people who have yet to meet a single refugee in Link's shelters are visiting different cities and colleges and communities to talk about North Korea is an incredible inspiration to me. The hope of the North Korean people lies with us and it is up to us to offer it. Please tell their stories. Help us fuel this movement. I have grown accustomed to this country. The people, the generosity, the love. I respect their success and ambition. And every day they humble me. My love for South Korea is what triggered this passion inside of me to reach out to the people in North Korea. They are Korean. They are people. They are mothers and fathers and children. <clears throat> they have a personality. They have feelings and experiences of their own. They have no freedom. They live four hours away from Gwangju. Let your interest be in the people and not the politics. It's time for change in North Korea and you can help.
That's it. Thank you for coming, everyone. <laughs>